Hey guys, today I'm back in Scrap Mechanic and I want to try making a machine gun. Now the physics in this game can be interesting at times, so storing and shooting large quantities of loose bullets will be quite the challenge. So let's get right into it. So starting out in the sandbox here, the first thing I did was put down a concrete pad and on that I put down an explosive canister. Now I was originally thinking of using this to launch the bullets because it has a pretty good amount of strength here, but it can really only launch metal without instantly destroying it. And you see here, this block went kind of far, but it wasn't that good. So I tried another test here at the larger block on top of the explosive canister, and it was a little bit better. It went to the air pretty high, but it still wasn't crazy or anything, and I was hoping for a lot better. So I tried using a larger explosive canister and a smaller piece of metal, but this didn't seem to change anything at all. It went about the same distance, and even expanding out the surface area to hopefully get more speed really didn't seem to change anything, and you'll see here it's basically the same story. Now I tried launching a bunch of other random things here to see what would happen, but nothing else seemed to work at all, so I knew then I had to try something else, and this is where I wanted to try out some pistons. Now if I set this piston here to have the max range and the max speed, you'll see it goes pretty fast, but it's still not that impressive. But if I stack a bunch of these pistons on top of each other, I was hoping their speeds were going to add and I'd get quite a bit of speed at the end. So after I got all those on there, I made sure to put down a block at the end, and with that, I attached all of these to the button. And testing it out here, it's not that bad. It actually went pretty far, but the problem is this thing takes up a lot of area and it's still not that great. I think I need at least two or three times the amount of pistons here to get a good amount of speed, and there's a lot of delays here, so I figured I might as well try try something else, and I wanted to use springs. Now, normally these are extremely glitchy in this game, so I figured I could probably use them to launch some stuff crazy far. Now, I tried to use a piston to compress the spring, but it wasn't really working. It seemed like the spring was a little too strong. So I down on two more pistons to help out with this, and finally here you can see it was able to do it. Now, I wanted to release all the tension really quickly here, so I deleted the block the spring was on, but that just deleted the spring, and then the pistons continued on. So I had a new idea instead, and that was going to be to delete the blocks right below the spring, and have the entire entire assembly fly out the back, and I tried it out here, and it just didn't seem to be that good. It did launch it, but it really didn't go that far, and increasing the stiffness of the spring helped a little bit, but it still wasn't that good at all. So I was really surprised at how tame the spring was being, but I figured if I sandwiched it in between two separate sets of pistons, that would probably be enough to start to get it to be weird. So I attached all these pistons to the button on the right side, and I started to put down a spring in the middle. Now I tried to get this pretty much perfectly spaced, but it shouldn't really matter, because I figured it'd roughly get itself in the middle anyway. Anyway, and after turning up the strength all the way, I tried to compress the pistons here, but I forgot to attach them all together, so they sort of just decoupled. So I had to try this again, and after that, you'll see after I delete the bottom, it was acting a little weird here, and once it got off, it was definitely freaking out, but it still just wasn't going that far. So I tried using a piston to push up this assembly once I had it in the middle, but this also didn't seem to work. It just got kicked out and then stopped. Now this is when I switched to my final design here, and that's going to be using these mountable spud guns. Now they shoot these potatoes pretty fast, so I figured if I put that on a block, it'd be pretty good here. And it actually went pretty far. It wasn't crazy or anything, but once I switched to wood, it was a lot better now when it was really starting to sail. So I tried doubling up the amount of guns because why not? And this seemed to be pretty good as well. I mean, I could launch a bigger piece and it was going a lot further. But I figured wood would definitely be the better way to go here since it just gets launched so much easier. Now, I wanted to try using a really large bullet here just to see what would happen. And after I got all the sides put in place, tried hitting the button and it was really bad. I'm not sure if it was all the extra friction or if all the extra weight really did that, but it seemed to go nowhere. And I figured small bullets would definitely be the way to go on the main gun. Now, I started out by mounting these three spud guns in the back. And after I did that, I also put one in the front. Now, once I had that in place, it actually is a piston beneath it, and you'll notice to be able to push it up, and it blocks the pistons behind it. Now, it's a little glitchy, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. But what this is going to allow me to do is shoot the same projectile twice, but only use a really small area. In theory, this should be infinitely stackable as well, so I just make a bunch of pistons going back, and that should allow me to just keep hitting the projectile and give it more speed. Now, in order to get this simple system to work, you can see here, I added in a single logic gate, and once I had that, I now have a system where once I hit the button, it instantly shoots the gun, and then lowers it down immediately after, and after that, I just had that in a single timer block, and that allows me to shoot the guns in the back right after that first one lowers, and shooting a block here seemed to work pretty well, so once I had that in place, I added on some mesh here, and this was to act as a barrel. Now the mesh has really low friction, so I figured it'd be good for some acceleration here, and giving it a test, it seemed to work fine, it really just launched the block into the distance. Now this system working really well, the next thing I wanted to do is add on some more logic, and make this infinitely expandable. Now I also wanted to make this repeat automatically, so I started by adding in a timer. Now to do this, I added in two logic gates, and I looped them around the 
this timer block, and that should allow it to just keep repeating itself. Now, also, I added in a button at the front and two more logic gates. This is going to work as a single tick input, and it just sends a really quick pulse into the timer block, and that allows it to just keep repeating even when I have really, really short durations. So instead of was repeating right, I added in three more logic gates here, and these are all XOR gates. These are going to work as a latch, but really what these are doing are making sure my signal's on for half the time and off for half the time. I don't want it to be slightly skewed one way or the other, so let's just make sure it's always going to be consistent, and once I had that in place, I wanted to start working on the system to control the pistons. So I added in a block here, and after that, you can see I'm able to automatically move up and down the first piston. So I liked the way I was going, and I added in another timer block here, and with this, it was working just as well as before, but now it could automatically run. So without working so well, I decided to completely tear it apart. Now this is that I could add even more pistons on here, but in order to do that, I need those back spud guns to be on a piston as well. So once I had that in place, I added in two more sets here, and thought that'd be a pretty good number to mess with for now. Now I positioned some of my logic in spots that wasn't amazing, so I had to delete a little bit of it and move it down a little bit further. With that though, I could start adding in these timer blocks here, and that allowed me to control each of the pistons. Now when I started out, they all move up and down at the exact same time, but I want them to be staggered slightly, and once I do that here, you'll notice that each of the pistons goes down a little bit before the one behind it, and that'll allow the piston to shoot, and then uncover the piston behind it so that it can shoot, and then continue that cycle. Now on top of those timer blocks, I had to add in a few more logic gates here, and this is so I could control when the spud gun shoots. So I wired all those up here, and I tried logic a block, and it seemed to work pretty well, so with that, I decided to just continue this out even further, and I went to nine different pistons. This was definitely be way more than I needed, but I didn't want to have a situation where I had something stuck in the barrel, so this would make sure that everything would definitely get ejected out. Now, I had to move around some logic to make this work, and in the process of doing that, things got a little bit chaotic, but I did manage to iron it out, and with that done, I just had to add in more timer blocks. This is what I really liked about this system, because every time I added another piston, I could just add in another timer block and a couple extra logic blocks, and you can see here, the system seems to be working pretty well. So I tried loading up a block here, and I just wanted to see how it would do. And it seemed to launch it pretty far, and there's definitely way more than I needed. And I made a few upgrades here. One of them was I made the pistons expand further, and also I doubled up the amount of guns I had. This was just in case the projectile deviated up a little bit, I'd still be able to give it a bit more speed, and I figured this would work well. So, with that in place, I tried shooting this larger block, and it seemed to go pretty far here, so I was pretty happy with the results. Now, I also tried putting another projectile here, but this time, I wanted to put an explosive on it. I was curious to see how far I could launch this, because explosive projectiles would be pretty cool, but this did not seem to work out so well, because it didn't go that far out of the barrel but at the very least it did explode when it hit the ground. Now that was enough messing around, and here what I wanted to do was start working on the automatic loading system. This was the part I was most concerned about because I knew it was going to be a lot of trouble. Now I thought at first I'd probably want a system to be able to cover the barrel and prevent anything from entering it. This would be able to work like an emergency stop in case I ever needed it, and I didn't really use it all that much, but it did sometimes come in handy. Now to get my magazine to work here, I expanded out my netting, and after I had some sidewalls put in place, I started putting in a piston. Now the original plan for this piston was just to push forward forward and keep pushing projectiles into a small hole, and I figured if it kept doing this, I'd be able to just keep feeding the gun. So I gave you a test here with a few netting blocks for ammo, and after I got the gun started, I hit the button to start up pushing the magazine. After the netting blocks got to the end though, they seemed to just explode out the barrel, and the physics got a little weird here, and nothing really got shot out. So I tried it again using wood, since it's a little bit easier to see what's going on with the wood in the barrel, and after giving this a test, it just seemed to act weird. The problem is, over compressing these blocks seems to break it, and only now, when I was just barely pushing the piston forward a bit, was it actually working, and even then, you could see these smoke particles everywhere, and it really wasn't perfect. Now, that's when I got the idea to try to use springs. Now, I figured I could use the springs to hopefully prevent everything from freaking out and absorb some of the impact. At first, though, they seemed to go right through the wood, and I forgot you need to have a block right in front of them, so I made sure to put that down, and I tried using a couple of wood blocks here to see how it would do. And at least at first, it really did not seemed to be much better. Everything seemed to be exploding out the exact same way here, so I tried enclosing it. I thought maybe that would help out, but it really didn't. I still had blocks shooting out the sides, and things were getting really weird. Now, I tried lowering the range of the piston, and after that, I tried using a bunch more, but this did not improve anything. I was getting shot out a lot here, and clearly this piston design wasn't gonna cut it. Now, that's when I tried using a vertical loading mechanism. This one, instead of having the blocks be pushed forward, I was hoping I could use gravity to pull them down. I thought maybe I could make it a little less glitchy, and also it 
tends to separate blocks out really well, so just dropping one at a time should be no problem. Now I tried loading up a few here and I wanted to give it a quick test. You can see as I hold this button down, it holds the blocks and prevents them from moving. But after I release the button, it allows one to drop down and then that cycle just keeps repeating. So I was hoping I'd be able to just indefinitely stack this and just keep dropping these down into the barrel and just keep shooting them out the front. Now I gave it a quick test here when I was really loaded up and pressing the button down was a little glitchy, but when I released it, that's when things got bad. It did shoot out the front, but also like 10 just ejected out the magazine, which really isn't that great. So I tried improving it with extra pistons and moving piston placements, but that really didn't change much at all. And it was marginally better for sure, but it was still extremely glitchy. And it also didn't fix the problem that I could only have like 10 loaded at a time. And it was kind of impossible to load any more than that. So I deleted that mechanism and I wanted to go back to the horizontal loader instead. This time though, instead of just having it aimlessly push all the blocks forward, I'm going to try using sensors here to detect if there's a block in each position and then extend out the pistons only the amount they need to be extended. This should limit the amount of pressure on the blocks and I was hoping that improved the situation. Now if you're stacking all those pistons I added on some logic gates here and I just had to connect everything up. The whole idea of the logic gates is that each of the sensors is going to get negated and that's because if there's a block in front of the sensor I don't want the piston to push so it's kind of this opposite effect and also I wanted a single switch in the front and that's so I could just shut off all of the pistons at once independent of what the sensors see and that's so I could load up the mechanism. Now I tried loading everything up here and in the first test it was a little glitchy which wasn't really a great sign and it seemed to just push all the blocks out out pretty much the same way as before. This time though, I did have the idea of adding in an extra timer block, and this would make sure that it's always a single block behind pushing all the blocks forward, and then I could use this extra timer block to just nudge the blocks forward and hopefully push it into the barrel. Now it wasn't perfect, but there were some signs that it could work, so I thought I might as well try extending this. But also, I was going to need to extend this out anyway, since my magazine was really small. Even with this extended one, it can only hold maybe 25 bullets, which isn't that much considering I could fire maybe two a second. But I decided to go ahead here and I ended up extending out all these pistons. And after that, I just had to connect it up to all of these logic gates again, which took quite a while. But after I got those all hooked up, I wanted to give it a test. Now I started to load all these up here and with those in place, I hit the button to start pushing them and it did start to nudge them. You can see the slight nudge it gives, but it was a little bit short. And that first push worked well. After that though, a lot of pistons started to fall out of position and then they all got weird. Now I figured this was potentially fixable, but I had another really good idea and I wanted to try try that one first. So I just made sure to save up what I had and I deleted all of the pistons and all of the sensors and with that done I built off of my main platform here and I wanted to start off a quick test. Now I remembered you could print blocks using the vacuum block and if I fill this up here connected to a button whenever I hit the button you can see it puts a block beneath it. Now I figured with that I could print my ammo but it wasn't perfect because I still needed a way to disconnect it from whatever I printed it onto. Now I tried using the saw blade to cut the wood that didn't work but that's when I remembered that the spud gun will actually break bubble wrap and if I can print bubble wrap and then delete it like this, I should be able to drop the bullet into the barrel and just keep doing this over and over. Now I did an extremely quick test here with even more vacuum blocks and this was to see how the printing worked and I was able to print on the blocks I had printed and I can actually print this really, really quickly. So I figured with this, it was good enough to try putting on the gun. Now I started out by building up a wood ring around the opening just to make it a bit easier to see. And after that, I built up the back wall and I started to put down some vacuum blocks. This was then I could start printing it out and this first one's gonna do the bubble wrap. So after I got that put on there, you can see is able to print the bubble wrap and there's also a piston. Now this might seem a little overcomplicated, but I'm gonna need this first vacuum block to get out of the way so I can use a second one to print wood right on top of it. Now I got that second vacuum block put in place here. After that, I put one on the left and one on the right side as well. This will make me a one by three bullet. And once I added a spud gun here as well, this will shoot straight up, break that bubble wrap and be able to drop it right down. And you can see with a bunch of buttons, I'm able to manually create the bullet and then I can use another button to drop it right into the hopper. Now I'm not gonna go through all the logic because it was very complicated complicated, but I got it to the point where it's able to shoot two bullets really fast here, and this design seems to not bind up at all. Now, I was pretty happy with the fire rate here because it was going really fast. Anything more than this, the game would get really laggy after like maybe two minutes of shooting. So with the mechanics of the gun looking good, the next thing I wanted to do is add on some concrete here and finish up the design. Now, I'm not that artistic, so it took me a little while to get what I wanted to get done, and I had to use a lot of reference images, but eventually here, I started building up the sides, and after that, I started working on the back of the gun. Now, a lot of this was just going to be empty, dead space space, which is usually how it ends up going, but I got most of the main parts done and finished up the design here. Now, of course, there's a few extra things to add on, and that would be the handle and the stock. This was taking me a while because the pixelated look of the game was a little tricky to translate images into this, but it seemed to be okay, and after that, I put in a trigger guard and the trigger. Now, I actually put the button to run the gun on the trigger because I figured, why not? There's really no extra trouble doing that. But before I show up the final design, this video is sponsored by Brilliant. As some of you 
may know, I'm currently a full-time engineering student, and I've been exploring Brilliant's Introduction to Linear Algebra course in preparation for my class next semester. Brilliant makes it easy and, frankly, fun to digest the course when I have time. Instead of just memorizing random facts, Brilliant teaches how to deeply understand a topic while still keeping it very engaging. And if Linear Algebra isn't your jam, then they have over 60 other courses and topics to choose from, including a gravitational physics course that I think my Kerbal Space Program viewers may enjoy. No matter what you choose, though, Brilliant makes learning easy and effective. You'll get practice with real problem solving that helps you train your critical thinking and creative problem solving skills. Every problem comes with a step-by-step -step solution that helps you understand the reasoning for each step. Rather than just solving repetitive problems, Brilliant teaches you the intuitive ideas behind topics like algebra, statistics, algorithms, and much more. You'll come to understand how STEM actually works and how it's relevant in your everyday life. So join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for my viewers. Head to brilliant.org slash recaptain to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. My first 200 viewers will also get 20% off an annual membership. So guys, thanks for watching. It's funny because this build isn't technically that complicated, but it's basically just because this game is so glitchy that it was extremely difficult to get done well. But if you have any other ideas for me, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you like the video, make sure to leave a like and otherwise, till next time.